chapter twenty four of tilda jane's orphans this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by gloria begaman somerville south carolina tilda jane's orphans by marshall saunders chapter twenty four perletta makes an explanation during the next week hank watched perletta as a cat watches a mouse but with such discretion and such apparent unconcern that the girl never dreamed her every action was under the closest scrutiny he was able to play the part of a detective with great ease for his holidays were not over and his interest in the progress of the new house was a reasonable excuse for his spending so much time in and about his barn home at the end of a week he and tilda jane again found themselves by the river one morning after breakfast the same little company was reunited there milkweed was browsing fitfully poacher and the dogs were having a game of tag while cousin una greatly improved in health was making short scampering excursions into the long grass bordering the path and excited by the tickling of the green blades was coming rushing back to tilda jane and playfully laying hold of her skirt with her white teeth as if to urge her to have a game of chase with her tilda jane however gave her but scant attention for she was listening with all her ears to hank who was speaking rapidly and earnestly sissy my report's all ready perletta is a new girl something has happened to lift her out of her queer state of fighting everybody for what she used to call her rights the chips off her shoulder but how it's been knocked off i don't know she's at rest in her mind and feels she's as big as any one i expect as i said last week that someone has left her money i've gone to town after her and i've seen her go into mr whiting's office three times she don't stay long but long enough for an interview now he wouldn't be bothered talking to her unless there was something to talk about he's doing business for her that's what it is and the business has smoothed out some of the wrinkles in her character you find her a heap easier to get on with don't you she's as smooth as silk right now said tilda jane enthusiastically and she don't growl at all hardly she's taken a shine to you sissy but there's one thing i don't like either through being dreamy and thinking about what's happened to her or feeling she's above it i notice you have the heft of the work now that's got to stop school has closed and you're having holidays but still i ain't willin' to keep a dog and bark myself i was going to speak to perletta about her breach of contract this morning but just now she asked me if she could have a talk with me and i told her to come down here by the river cause she said she didn't want dad to hear now you stay when she comes i don't want to talk to her alone hist there she is on the bank here talk about una don't let her think we've been going over her good doggie and he bent down and tried to caress the shrinking pup who drew back from him and braced herself against tilda jane poor little una poor girl said tilda jane gently is she a scared young goosey how she dotes on you said hank in a clear voice then lifting his head he said come on down perletta most of the family's here the big girl came awkwardly and solemnly down the bank and stood before them her red hands hanging at her sides her eyes were fixed on tilda jane but hank said commandingly don't mind her speak out i ain't got no secrets from sissy perletta smiled peculiarly i've got nothing to say but what will sound sweet to her ears but tilda jane ain't bold 
it makes her scrunch up to praise her tuber face the little girl blushed shamefacedly and hung her head while hank said brusquely no need of praise cut it out now what do you want to say to me i want to say this sir perletta began ponderously and with a certain kind of dignity i ain't a poor girl no longer i be a real lady oh be you said hank gravely i'm proud to hear it and being a lady i s'pose you'll always act like one i'll act the lady to them as treats me like the lady replied perletta and i'll fight them as don't and being a lady i don't need to go out to service no more i gives you warnin i want to know exclaimed hank however he added stoically i guess we'll bear up under it now would you mind giving us some information about the transformation scene that has made you out of a woman into a lady i don't know nothing about seeing transfers said perletta with ill-concealed rapture but i be what they calls an airless airless repeated hank surveying her fuzzy pate i should call you on the contrary main hairy i'm an hairless she continued in a state of grave happiness too deep to be upset by his frivolity and i've walked dead into a fortin do tell said hank we've got it now our old friend money which is the root of all evil so you're an heiress and you've come into a fortune yes sir and how much is your fortune nine hundred dollars she paused an instant and hank with a glance at tilda jane said with real feeling i say perletta that's fine tilda and i are glad aren't we sissy glad oh so glad said the little girl clasping her hands now you'll put that in the bank perletta and keep it till your old days come maybe you'd better wait till i've had time to say what i've begun remarked perletta with preternatural gravity it's nine hundred dollars a year hank stared at her at tilda jane at the dogs and the pigs and then turned his head and gazed at milkweed who had come to join in the family conclave and had thrust her velvety nose sociably over his shoulder do i hear aright he asked or do my ears deceive me have you perletta garraby come into an annuity of nine hundred dollars a year that's what they calls it she said emphatically whiting and company and others it's mine till death us do part nine hundred even dollars by year to do what i likes with to chuck it in that river or to give it to the boys there and she indicated the pigs who had left their play to wallow again in the mud and who is your benefactor asked hank staggering back to lean against milkweed in pretended weakness do you mean the man as guv it to me yes hurry up and tell us this is more funny than a story-book twas an uncle brother to my father he were a doctor who was your father yes sir he were a fine smart man when young then he took to passin the bottle and when he was older he married my mother who were cook in the house where he boarded she had no learnin but she were good till he taught her to pass the bottle too his folks was shamed to own him but when this old man you mean your uncle yes my uncle before he came to die he thinks of me cause he knowed his brother had one child he tracked me through the asylum then he wrote to old man whiting and old man whiting he went on to kennedy where my uncle was a patient turney a what interrupted hank patient slicers then here it is wrote and she drew out her well-stuffed purse and exhibited a newspaper clipping tucked among the bills patent solicitors hank read aloud or attorneys as you were trying to call them garraby and son the old established firm head office toronto branches in montreal 
winnipeg vancouver and washington d c seems to me i've heard of them you don't mean to say you're a niece of the head of that firm he's dead she said solemnly him that was my uncle old man whiting saw him fuss though and he told him what mr waithsmith and mr tracy said about you and tilda jane and grandpa and me but what have we to do with it asked hank in amazement him that was my uncle wanted to know where i was what i was who might be my friends old man whiting says he give good account of us all and my uncle he says if my niece be what you say she be she'll not have need for much she'd better bide with the good folks that had her and i'll leave enough to keep her comfortable hank for once in his life had nothing to say he was turning over this new surprise of fortune in his mind but raised his head when perletta went on i have a cousin old man whiting says he's a boss looking man as straight as a kennebec pine but he's got a wife and young uns and he says he loathes i'd fit in better here nor there hank surveyed perletta from head to foot evidently her uncle had been a rich man his son would have had all the advantages that wealth and culture could bestow small wonder that he wished to keep the ignorant uncouth relative at a distance from him and yet hank resented his attitude great relatives he said aloud i guess you're well rid of them perletta hunched her broad back significantly i ain't such as they be she said with more penetration than hank would have given her credit for possessing a great wave of compassion swept over him the unfortunate girl inspired him with infinitely more pity now that he understood she realized the difference between herself and more favored persons don't you fret he said consolingly you've got good friends here you don't need to go to canada tilda jane's face was glowing with admiration and affection and seizing perletta's hand she pressed it warmly you ain't hard perletta you've got lots of soft spots and i'm never going to get tetchy with you again and i guess i'll stand by you even if you lose that money i'm breathing easy now i know about it it's like as if old mount katahdin had been lifted from my chest the big girl looked down at the smaller one clinging to her hand you're just as tickled as i have that money as if you had it yourself she said shrewdly he ain't and she nodded her head toward hank he'd rather you'd had it this statement was so true that hank did not take the pains to deny it well continued perletta i come here to talk business i wants to know as my uncle said and as i thinks myself if you'll let me go on livin with you not as hired help but as a boarder hank for a minute was slightly confused and began to run over possibilities in his mind i ain't a-going to work no more perletta went on i be goin to study mr waysmith he said he had an idee of someone to learn me mr waysmith ejaculated hank have you been to him i have you and tilda runs to him with troubles why not me this question was unanswerable and hank put one in his turn did he treat you well perletta as soft and as easy as grease i told him my worries and my joys like he was my pa hank turned round made a face at milkweed who was leaning her head too heavily on his shoulder then once more directed his attention to perletta who was giving further information in a sing-song voice says i to him says i sir i'm bent on stayin with them folks and then there's the boys he asked me what boys and i told him all about dodge and grappler and that it would be main hard to get board for two pigs and a lady anywhere but here he said that was so 
said i'd better bide here and you could get another girl to be hired help why ain't he cute observed hank to take such an interest in you he told me to pay good board cause boarders was a bother and he said it i'd better have you plan a tasty room in the new house for me where i can sit and read hank looked incredulous did mr waysmith say all that most of it replied perletta solemnly in course i told him my ideas and he bowed his head and he arsked me to call again hank began to laugh perletta you and mr waysmith ain't got exactly the idea of a lady l a d y don't spell lazy bones ladies has white hands perletta observed seriously i lay out to have mine as pale as milk and she stretched out her two red brawny paws as she spoke but white hands alone don't make a lady said hank impatiently a lady might shine stoves from morning till night and day in and day out for a month till her hands was as black as the lead but still she'd be a lady a dead lady said perletta owlishly shining stoves always lays me out you can't make ladies vociferated hank that is you can't make them in the way you're planning to do it you're mixing up laziness with your idea of what's proper you mustn't give up work perletta you'd not be contented do you plan for me to board and work too she asked suspiciously no no you don't grasp my idea at all i was a tom naughty to try to make you grasp it you'll have to grow into it in course i'll take care of the boys she said uncomprehendingly and with a glance toward her wallowing pets but listen now i don't count on no housework don't you suppose that i know boarders don't do housework asked hank shortly i was only trying to get some of your buzzy ideas out of your head and i eats at your table said perletta warningly hank broke into sudden laughter you're mightily afraid of kitchen boarding you want to make sure of the parlor and when can i begin to board she asked eagerly the first minute you see a bite of anything to eat replied hank explosively oh my give me a minute to laugh this is the creamiest thing i ever heard of perletta gazed at him benevolently i'm awful pleased you're willin for me to stay and set down with you and eat she said i was feared you'd kick hold on said hank there's dad my soul i don't know what he'll say about having you in the family he don't set much store by me said perletta dejectedly can you make him give in i'll try said hank cause mr waysmith lowed there was lots of folks would try to fool my money out of me but all of yees wouldn't i tell you what perletta said hank with mock gravity some fellow will be shining up to you proposing marriage for the sake of that nine hundred dollars i wouldn't talk about it if i were you i ain't told no one but the melangons and the comias and the leblancs and the thibodeaux she replied hank groaned oh well i guess it don't matter we'll try to keep you out of scrapes and i ain't likely to marry no one she said seriously cause you'd be the only one that i'd have and you wouldn't have me if i was worth nine hundred dollars a minute hank was once more overcome and speechless flabbergasted he choked in his throat and he gazed at his admirer with a gaping mouth you can shut your mouth she said sarcastically and quit being scared for i to know that i'd have you if you wallied in the mud arter me like those pigs men is pigs anyway you pretend to be so awful fond of tilda jane and you're always orderin her round tilda do this and tilda do that tilda come for a ride tilda come for a walk ain't her young legs tired when she runs and waits on you 
yes men is hogs i say and i prefer my hogs right down on the ground where they belong and where i can drive em stead of their drivin me old maids can do as they likes there ain't no man with a stick over em the harder a man says he likes a woman the harder he bosses her i ain't a-goin to be no slave i be an old bachelor lady maid now i selfish spluttered hank finding his voice at last i impose on tilda jane you bet you do and i'm thinkin of doptin her continued perletta grandly once she wanted to dop me and you wouldn't let her i guess now i'm a-goin to dopt her i've spoke of it to mr waysmith and to old man whiting and they said all right if she was willin papers could be made out i'd like her to be me little sister tilda jane in a rapture at perletta's thought of her again seized her by the hand the big girl put one of her own hands on her head and with a smile that was ennobling and touching said softly the other night she crept in my room she knowed i'd had money somehow mind you she didn't know but what i'd stole it said she perletta i've tucked away a few dollars you can have it if you want to buy anything tears was in her eyes and she kissed me added perletta in a lower voice she kissed me and there ain't no one done that since my mother died hank gave himself an impatient shake and turned away a new spirit had certainly come over perletta she was really quite affecting and drawing out his handkerchief he blew his nose violently several times but she was speaking to him now and he must turn round can i dop the only person in the world that thinks anything of me she was saying softly to him no perletta he replied mildly not with my consent tilda jane is my adopted sister you ain't had no papers made out said perletta eagerly i'd have writings no i've no papers said hank and it ain't because i don't approve of having things binding if i was a man with money to settle on her i'd have papers of adoption made out pretty quick but s'pose my health fails or i was to marry some witch of a thing that would chase sissy up hill and down dale i wouldn't want her to feel bound to stay though as long as i have health and strength and am wise enough to remain single i want sissy with me i thought you wasn't goin to marry remarked perletta disdainfully neither i am if i can help it i tell you i ain't got no more idea of marrying and no more wish for it than those pigs have but i've travelled i've seen women sharp enough to catch even me will i or nil i now i'm doing my best to keep out of their way but suppose one of them laid eyes on me where would i be and where would sissy be then you refuses to dop sissy cause you're scared some woman might catch you precisely and i don't want you to adopt her for the same reason there's fellows cute enough to trap you perletta and suppose you married one and tilda was in your house and he wanted to get rid of her no we'll leave things at loose ends and sissy can stay where she's got the pleasantest outfit ain't there no good men and no good woman near kickasset inquired perletta rolling her small eyes round the horizon heaps of em hank hastened to assure her but they don't go hunting like the foxy ones i'd hate to be lugged off from my comfortable home ain't marriage the best thing that can happen to man or woman asked perletta gravely course it is i'll get married some day it's the right thing to do but no man wants to be driven to it before he's ready my time ain't come yet perletta turned from him as if wearied by the conversation and directed her attention to tilda jane who stood breathlessly listening to them suddenly a new thought penetrated perletta's thick pate and her eyes twinkled s'pose little sissy married herself 
she suggested and her husband wouldn't let you and me live along o her the expression of tilda jane's face and the novelty of this idea so amused hank in his present excited state that he went off into one of his gales of laughter sissy mary he cried stamping up and down on the grass oh my bones and body what a drollery bless her heart and soul wouldn't she chivy a man about wouldn't she dragon him and make him stand round oh hold me some one or i'll explode you great calf ejaculated perletta half admiringly half contemptuously great calf yes echoed hank i feel young most in my cradle i the rest of the sentence was never uttered in his fit of merriment he had propelled his fat frame too near the edge of the bank and suddenly he lost his balance and went over backward splash into the river the girls screamed and una ran yelping back to the house while milk weed the pigs and poacher always ready to join in family joy or affliction hastened to the spot the gallant poacher sprang in after him but the pigs in concern at seeing him in their favorite wallowing place advanced to snout him out of it perletta and tilda jane in anxiety and excitement waded in up to their knees then retreated shriekingly as hank struggled to his feet and stood with his arms extended his whole body dripping with muddy water step by step he groped his way to the bank the girls walking backwards before him oh look at his poor head cried tilda jane all plastered with black mud and that dreadful water pouring from his face hank come this way till i wipe you off hank's plunge into the river had not washed the nonsense out of him he was still laughing convulsively and making lunges and plunges at the two girls he drove them in hysterical agitation up the bank and across the road towards the house grandpa in rather a bad temper at having been left alone a rather rare occurrence was coming out of the yard with handy andy they were going to take a walk but hearing the confusion by the river stopped to see what it meant first came perletta and tilda jane running and looking over their shoulders and emitting squeals and giggles of perturbation behind them groped and staggered a strange figure with muddy dripping arms escorted by poacher and the pigs occasionally the strange figure would make a run then would fall into a walk grandpa stared in amazement handy andy timidly approached the curious figure to see what it was it paused on seeing him allowed him to sniff his way quite near then with a watery shout leaped forward at him and brandished two waving arms poor andy did not stop to see whose arms they were with one loud squeal of fright and perplexity he ran to shelter himself behind grandpa's legs grandpa had some time before he recognized the sloppy figure and he cried irritably what have you been doing with yourself sir you look as if you had been playing with the pigs you had better get into the barn i didn't chuck myself in the river on purpose sir called hank in a conciliatory way twas an accident and a bit of harmless fun ain't as bad as rolling home drunk at night you dare to drink said grandpa wrathfully just let me catch you at it and precipitately wheeling around he hobbled down the road but fast as he went he was outdistanced by the nimble and terrified andy hank ambled into the yard saluted the amused masons at work on the cellar then mounted to his what have you been doing with yourself sir 
own part of the hayloft calling gaily to tilda jane second best suit of clothes ruined sissy but i've had enough fun to make up for their loss end of chapter twenty four Chapter Twenty Five of Tilda Jane's Orphans. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon. Tilda Jane's Orphans by Marshall Saunders. Chapter Twenty Five Hank Breaks Important News to Grandpa. I ain't sharp in a business way hank was saying gloomily an hour later now when perletta announced her stupendous news to me i should have said let things go on according to the old footing till i get dad used to your transformation scene instead of that i booby-like said that she could at once enter on her new state i declare that i and my name ought to be changed to a great big u i wish women didn't always want to hurry nature now there's that table set for dinner with a place for perletta and she's helping tilda jane with the vittles out there and keeping one eye on me to see when i'm going to tell dad i might as well make the plunge twill be my second this morning and the uncongenial element down below ain't half as uncongenial as dad's cold soul will be a pity i'm monkeyed with andy but i've got aboard him that girl's eye is like a gimlet and twould be poor policy to offend and hairless and parlor boarder to be dad he said aloud and approaching the old man don't you want to take off your specs and put down your paper and talk to your son for a spell no i don't said grandpa crossly and burying his head more deeply in the Siskasset daily times would you take a short walk sir to admire the beauties of nature asked hank the young corn down at the back of the Meliquans is growing finely, and the noonday sun is shedding a lustrous glory on the farming land behind us. Farming fiddlesticks, said Grandpa decidedly. Sir, said Hank sharply, come out back of the barn a spell. I want to talk business to you. Grandpa stared at him over his glasses. Be you foolin' yet? No, I ain't said hank crossly come on father i've got something to tell you the old man laid down his paper and took up his cane the word business had excited his curiosity hank's unfortunate reference to tilda jane as a lady following him the night he came home had aroused a suspicion in poor old grandpa's mind that hank was contemplating matrimony nothing could allay this suspicion and it was with sudden meekness and pathos that he strove to read the enigmatical expression on hank's face as he conducted him toward the group of lilacs at the back of the garden where are we going he asked submissively to the bench near the pig's bed replied hank they won't listen and they'll keep listeners off look here father he said when dillson senior had seated himself on the rustic bench facing dodge and grappler's lair in the grass have you noticed anything funny about perletta lately oh perletta exclaimed the old man in huge relief no i guess not he said indifferently only that she gads powerfully and leaves the work for sissy she's given me warning said hank solemnly she's going to stop being our hired girl good riddance of bad rubbish said grandpa she ain't the only fish in the sea 
but tilda jane likes her said hank she'll have to unlike her said grandpa calmly did you care to know why she's giving up her lucrative position asked hank not particularly still i'll not close my ears if you say it she's come into money said hank with a gravity befitting the occasion money hey how much sneered grandpa two dollars or three maybe she's got nine hundred dollars a year said hank in the gallant tone of a champion nine hundred dollars repeated grandpa quickly who says she has nine ain't it nine cents hank lost patience i say sir he exclaimed you ain't fair the girl's a lack wit but still the lord made her and we're bound to give her some room on his footstool not shove her off who's shoving asked grandpa unamiably i ain't but when a hooty dooty tells me the moon is made of green cheese i say prove it prove it and i'll believe you bring me down a slice let me stick my teeth in it i know cheese but i ain't gonna imagine it a bright thought struck hank wait a bit sir he said i'll be back in a minute and he ran toward the barn perletta he said sticking his head in the little rough house where the cooking stove had been put up tilda jane said you'd bought a fur coat for father is it so yes it's so she said slowly would you mind if i showed it to him for an instant i'll not let him keep it i just want to convince him that you've got money he's an agnostic this morning don't know anything i guess you can do anything you likes with it she said agreeably make the old man keep it if you kin i expect i'll have to battle him to get him to take a present from me run get it like a good girl said hank Berlina went with lumbering haste to her sleeping quarters and returned with a large cardboard box under her arm and here's a writin she said extending a piece of paper to him old man whiting gove it to me hank took box and paper and read aloud this is to certify that miss perletta garraby of ciscasset maine has become the recipient of a yearly sum of nine hundred dollars according to the will of her late uncle henry garraby of toronto canada joseph whiting you never asked me for that she said pointedly no replied hank i believed your word but perletta we must have patience with my father he's old and not very strong i ain't hard on him she said patiently you understands him if you didn't jump on him once and so often we'd all lead the dog's life hank grinned and scuttled back in the direction of the lilacs grandpa still hard and unbelieving sat leaning forward with hands crossed on the top of his cane his old shrewd eyes bent on the sky as if begging for some luminary to descend to convince him of the truth of hank's extraordinary statement about perletta hank flung the box on the seat beside him tore off the string and throwing aside tissue paper wrappings and scattering mothballs far and near drew out a handsome black fur-lined coat with a deep collar and held it up before him there's a slice of the moon sir grandpa looked at the coat at hank at dodge and grappler who had drawn near and were delightedly devouring the mothballs then he said well it ain't green cheese sir said hank seriously and he turned over the box cover look here march and son furriers ciscasset you know the standing of that firm do you suppose they'd trust a girl like perletta with that coat unless she had money to pay for it 
it ain't worth nine hundred dollars said grandpa stubbornly that girl has got her purse crammed with money said hank and she goes to see mr whiting on business you know joseph whiting used to sit on the same bench with him at school said grandpa only he made a fortune and i didn't had more brains i suppose i don't know does he say perletta has money hank impressively presented him with mr whiting's assurance of perletta's truthfulness grandpa stared at it long and earnestly then he said it might be a forgery i don't know i don't say it is still it might be hank laughed irresistibly you know it ain't father how could a girl like perletta counterfeit a signature like that and what would she want to do it for come now be reasonable i haven't talked to mr whiting but perletta tells me he's been to canada where her uncle lived that left her the money you'd better believe he looked into securities and all that it's a sure thing if he's in it how did that goose girl get a rich uncle asked grandpa contemptuously well i don't suppose she made em i expect our creator ain't above giving her rich relatives same as he gives lots of other poor folks it's a fine coat said grandpa caressing the fur of the garment that hank had thrown on the seat beside him must have cost a good bit over a hundred dollars she'll look like a fool in it though it's for you roared hank and may i be forgiven for saying it but you don't deserve it for me said grandpa mildly surely not she don't like me yes she does poor girl said hank wrathfully she's ignorant and she's ugly but she has human feelings she's all alone in the world and she's pining for someone to hang on to she wants to adopt sissy i suppose if we'd let her have her she'd take her and those pigs and set up housekeeping for herself she ain't gonna have sissy remarked grandpa in alarm she can have the pigs he poked them contemptuously with his stick if they ain't dead from eating them poison smelling things oh my soul cried hank and going on his knees he wrestled with dodge and grappler to dislodge the mothballs already in their mouths and seeing he could not do it he rapidly picked up those remaining on the ground what's in them dad suppose they die won't i catch it there's tar in em and camphor and crude carbolic acid said grandpa slightingly but i fear there ain't enough of the latter to carry em off we'll hope for the best said hank with a sigh they're pretty tough now dad to come back to business perletta wants to go on living with us but as a boarder we'll have to get another girl the question is are you willing if you're going to raise cain about it she'll have to get out i have no objection to her staying said grandpa coolly if she'll pay good board and keep herself quiet she'll have to come to the table with us not while i'm alive said grandpa bringing his stick down firmly on the ground when i'm dead you can have all the idiot asylums and states prisons you like at the table i won't care boarders don't usually pay high board and live in the kitchen said hank dryly at least if they have i ain't heard of the custom the kitchen is good enough for her said grandpa shortly or the cookhouse now that we've no kitchen give her an inch and she'll take an l in my old school books there was a story of a rabbit that borrowed her neighbor's home she got in and they never could get her out mr waysmith advised her to board with us remarked hank diplomatically mr waysmith said grandpa haughtily and what has the likes of perletta to do with mr waysmith she went to him and he ain't too proud and mighty to advise a poor servant girl in want of a friend mr waysmith is his own master said grandpa tranquilly i ain't got no jurisdiction over him 
but what will he say when he hears that you've refused the poor girl's request asked hank keenly won't his good opinion of you suffer grandpa showed his first signs of weakening i ain't refused anything let her board and give good money to help with the housekeeping i don't care she can have a little table in the corner of the dining room if she likes it don't matter to me she's got to sit right down with us said hank decidedly grandpa stared up at the sky and hummed a hard little tune i see what it is remarked hank with pretended desperation i've got to get married a woman at the head of this house would keep things straight no one minds me and you're going to break up the family for if perletta goes tilda jane will fall ill of worry and maybe die grandpa's stubborn old mind was shaken to its foundations a daughter-in-law is a whip that i can always crack over his poor old head when he's too ugly hank muttered son grandpa was saying in a shaky voice married life is a dog's life i'm getting quite fond of dogs said hank shrewdly there was only one woman worth marrying and i got her grandpa continued dejectedly now dad said hank firmly you know you're saying what ain't so sis Cassett is full of nice girls looking for husbands and there's more out in the country I know a girl out Karakunkwe that's a good girl and a smart girl. I've only to hold out a finger and she'll come. And she'll take good care of you, too. Grandpa was so overcome and so frightened that he went all to pieces. His old hands were trembling, though he leaned hard on his cane to steady himself. Son he said in a voice that was smooth and mellifluous i guess perletta might stay i got a turn against her for running off with my pup but i ain't blind i see there's a change in her she ain't so ugly good for you dad and hank gave him a resounding and affectionate slap on the back i thought you'd come around and dad i want you to understand this i'm not one to make you do anything against your own interests you know i think a lot of sissy and i'm beginning to tolerate perletta but the both of em rolled together don't count with me as much as you do you're my father see give me your arm son said grandpa blandly and we'll walk to the barn together I'll tell Perletta she can stay if she behaves herself. See those pigs are trying to keep Andy from going to their bed. Let him smell round it if he wants to. To please his father, Hank made a great show of forcing Dodge and Grappler to abandon the determined attitude they had taken, namely that Handy Andy should not inspect their freshly made straw bed. The mischievous little dog scampered over the bed, bit and pulled at the straw, then leaving the indignant pigs to rearrange it he scuttled after grandpa and hank what about the coat sir asked hank glancing at the parcel he carried in his hand perletta said you could keep it now if you liked give it back to her said grandpa gently cold weather hasn't come when it does we'll see it's powerful handsome twould become me hank with some trepidation watched his father approaching the cookhouse. Perletta stuck her red face out when she saw him coming, and set her teeth for contempt, patronage, or whatever was to come. Perletta, said Grandpa shortly, my son says you wish to board with us. I'm agreeable to it. If you'll hold yourself ready to leave at any time, if it shouldn't be convenient to keep you, so far so good and hank breathed easily while perletta flushed with pleasure i'll not give much trouble sir she stammered i'm pleased to bide you seems like home folks here all of yees you've got to be in early nights said grandpa strictly and not to gad too much 
oh powers of contrariness muttered hank dad would empty all the boarding-houses in the state in about ten minutes and not have too much company grandpa was continuing and not be sassy and keep the pigs out of the way of strangers as much as possible yes sir said perletta but not quite as meekly as she had spoken before and if you have callers keep them in the kitchen what about the new girl asked perletta brusquely where'll she take her callers in the woodhouse replied grandpa promptly perletta frowned and hank to effect a diversion surreptitiously kicked over a pot of soup that had been set outside the cookhouse tilda jane and perletta both sprang to it in dismay and grandpa's lecture was cut short mumbling to himself he went to sit down in his big chair and think over this last domestic problem when dinner time came he waved a hand grandly toward perletta's place at the table hank was suffering from suppressed laughter but sobered himself at a beseeching look from tilda jane perletta contrary to his expectations scarcely opened her mouth during the meal except to eat grandpa kept a sharp eye on her all ready to jump verbally if she did anything out of the way she neither put her knife in her mouth nor smacked her lips the girl's got more sense than he thinks hank reflected surveying his father from under his eyelids she's watching sissy like a cat and is doing whatever she does she'll talk in time but just now she's too overcome by the grandeur of her situation to do anything but hold her tongue i wonder how she'll put in her time now and i wonder what mr waysmith had in mind when he said he had a plan about someone to teach her a big thing like that could never go to school and sit in the infant class End of chapter 25 Recording by John Brandon Chapter 26 of Tilda Jane's Orphans This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon tilda jane's orphans by marshall saunders chapter twenty six a cottage of gentility one evening three weeks after perletta had been boarding in the dillson family grandpa announced his intention of going for a drive i'm sorry dad i can't take you said hank there's a fellow coming to see me soon after supper and i said i'd be around the barn somewhere i can drive myself said grandpa stoutly you can but you can't replied hank mildly do you think i'd trust you to those rheumatic hands in case of an accident no sir you're too valuable yet to lose you'll have to take one of the girls grandpa looked first at tilda jane then at perletta he would rather have the little girl but the big girl was a better driver and was stronger to hold in the power of whole milkweed perletta he said shortly you will go with me hank winked at poacher who at the mention of a drive had stood on his hind legs and was pawing the young man's chest dad's a funny fellow isn't he he said in the dog's ear orders a border round like a coachman and the boarder don't mind come on help me harness when grandpa and perletta drove down the road half an hour later in hank's neat black buggy with handy andy tucked in between them and poacher running behind hank turned to tilda jane with one of his explosive laughs isn't that dad a great case pon my word i believe he's getting fond of perletta tilda jane's eyes were twinkling does money always make a difference she asked i mean does it always make folks nice 
i guess usually it makes them harder he said but certainly in perletta's case it has toned her down wonderful she don't see a fight now unless it hugs her so tight she can't get away from it she doesn't seem so ugly looking either said the little girl pausing in her occupation of washing out cup towels to gaze thoughtfully at the sunny western sky it's her expression that has changed said hank when she used to roll out that under lip she was a sight i say sissy you'll worry those things all to rags scrubbing them like that hang the things out on the line and come sit down and look at the new house very well she said laconically and hanging out her towels and carefully pouring the soapy water on some nasturtions planted in a tub to keep them out of handy andy's way she followed hank to a seat on the small grass plot in front of their new house the frame was up now and boarded in the carpenters were doing their work faithfully and hank never tired in his minute supervision of every detail it's going to be a pretty snug nest he said admiringly now ain't it tilda i tell you by november we'll be glad to sit round a good fire inside those walls tilda jane smiled and drawing a roll of knitting from her apron pocket began to heel one of grandpa's woolen socks i'm getting this ready for winter she said holding it up hank looked round about them at the luxuriant vegetation of gardens roadside and river bank this was a fertile little spot one of the most fertile by the ciscasset river and it seemed strange in the glowing beauty of this summer evening to be thinking of winter storms and cold hank said tilda jane suddenly who are the touraines and as she spoke her eyes went from her knitting across the green hedge separating them from their neighbor's house on the left the dolliver's pretty cottage hank always called it the cottage of gentility and was in the habit of quoting in its connection southey's lines in the devil's walk he passed a cottage with a double coach house a cottage of gentility and he owned with a grin that his favorite sin is pride that apes humility it certainly had a large stable and carriage house and it certainly had been occupied mostly by broken-down gentlefolks captain dolliver and his wife who were going to leave it had been what hank called army folks and stuck up they rarely associated with their neighbors and the dillsons had been glad to hear that they were to move away and live with a son the two reigns repeated hank when tilda jane asked him the question the two reigns bless the child if any one knows about them your humble servant ought to when their father died mr waysmith was left sole executor with precious little to execute but there's a great to-do made about what there is and he often sends me there on errands is there a large family inquired tilda jane medium sissy medium and he smiled in amusement first there's aunt melindy the head of the family a glorious old maid of sixty with one tiny crack in her worn-out brain i was waiting for her in the parlor the other day and opened a book of bird pictures she ran in screaming and slammed the pages together saying the birds would all fly away if i left the book open i dare say that worried her said tilda jane soberly course it did 
but she is such a good old soul that she soon forgave me they're poor you know and she tries to save has only one tooth left in her head carries the rest round tied up in a corner of her handkerchief hoping that a day will come when she can afford a set of artificials what a sore thing that must be said tilda jane can't any of her friends give her some teeth she wouldn't have em sissy she's proud in her way who are the rest of the family asked the young girl curiously next to the aunt comes her nephew bertrand he paints a little plays a little but don't bring in the dollars they call him downtown the general purpose young saphead with a muskrat income and sealskin ambitions you might give him a job painting the new house said tilda jane benevolently hank hung his head over the back of his seat and began to laugh softly i can see myself offering bertrand terrain the job of painting our house wouldn't he stare a paralyzing stare he paints pictures sissy not houses and he has a sister hasn't he asked tilda jane dropping her knitting and holding out her arms to una who was trying to crawl on her lap a sister yes the dancing star denise the will-o'-the-wisp the admired of all the idle young fellows about town is she idle too no i don't think so she's a gay tricksy sort of girl gives music lessons to help out their income she's engaged to rich young vereker but his folks ain't willing for him to marry her cause she's poor i don't know how they'll figure it out is that all the family asked tilda jane no there's a baby half sister to denise and bertrand the cutest thing about two and a half years old won't talk a word but tells you everything in dumb show then beside the baby there's the servant girl old faisal merithu the glummest foxiest old party in maine looks me up and down as if she didn't know how to class me calls me that young man isn't there any one else in the family no except the dog mary wags what are you so particular about knowing all i have to say of the touraines cause they're comin to live in that house said tilda jane solemnly and she pointed to the dolliver's cottage you don't mean to say so exclaimed hank abandoning his lolling attitude and sitting up straighter the touraines are yes mr waysmith was here to-day with a young lady going over the cottage i was away and you were away but he saw grandpa and perletta and he said the young lady would be willing to teach perletta anything she wanted to know well i declare that beats me exclaimed hank and perletta said there was a little child with them continued tilda jane with deep feeling and it had blue eyes and curly hair just think hank of living next door to what i've longed for all my life they're all as pretty as a picture said hank except aunt melindy and faisal i say that's a great thing for perletta to have a young lady like miss terrain teach her do you think perletta will ever make much of herself hank asked tilda jane wistfully hank looked all round him as if fearful that someone might overhear do you know what dad said to me last night about her said he you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear not elegant but what's the case 
and what did you say asked the little girl shrewdly said i dad you can make silk purses out of anything nowadays there ain't no limit to human ingenuity tilda jane smiled but now hank do you really and truly think that perletta could ever be what she wants to be a real lady she can be a real lady as far as goodness and proper behavior goes said hank for she's certainly improving fast but she's got to get that silly idea of having white hands knocked out of her head and i guess the dancing star is just the one to knock it out she'll razzle dazzle you till you don't know where you are i have no idea of being anything but a good housekeeper said tilda jane steadily and loving my neighbor and not being tricky and trying to eat right and act right and not have to fight a jumpy life frightens me hank tittered you can fight in the open or in the underbrush if you're hard pressed but you don't enjoy it i'll tell you what tilda it would be a fine thing if miss Turain would teach you with perletta you'd like it better than going to school and she's had a fine education i know for i've seen the bills i'd love that said tilda jane with ill-concealed joy is she fresh from school yes she's only nineteen she's been in new york and europe and i don't know where i guess mr waysmith must have paid for it all he and her father were great chums tilda we'll find out about this teaching when miss terrain comes but mind now you go slow when they move in i'm scared of these falling aristocrats they're like mules and often give you a kick when you least expect it you've a good heart and will be inclined to trot over with offers of help you let me run things all right hank said the young girl meekly end of chapter twenty six recording by john brandon chapter twenty seven of tilda jane's orphans this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by john brandon tilda jane's orphans by marshall saunders chapter twenty seven the tourains the tourains had come and were about settled in their new quarters settled as much as persons of their bohemian characteristics ever could be settled hank avoided them consistently but he was secretly in a state of absolute content and delight at their proximity the summer was now nearly over the new house was completed all but the finishing touches and one saturday afternoon he was roaming from room to room his old clothes on a cap on the back of his head the expression of his face beatific and intense they say all folks have cares he was soliloquizing i ain't got one maybe some are on the way but i hope not i say they're having an uncommon gay time over there and he approached one of the windows that overlooked the tourane's lawn it was a pretty lawn green and fresh and extensive for so small a house and in the centre was a group of trees under these trees a small table was set afternoon tea continued hank scarcely heard of such a thing till these folks came according to them it is as important as breakfast dinner or supper at the table sat miss Touraine, pouring tea in tiny cups while her brother stood waiting to pass them to their guests my land hank went on if she ain't got all my family over there 
even to dodge and grappler who are googling through the hedge they were indeed all there grandpa sat in a cushioned chair a broad smile on his face while the tiny lola the baby of the family danced and pantomimed before him so clever a mimic was the child that hank could plainly understand the story she was telling an hour before hank had seen two men stop their buggies in front of the cottage of gentility jump out and proceed to make a bargain in trading horses the baby was going through the whole thing in pantomime she pulled up an imaginary horse with a jerk of her pink fists sprang out of an imaginary buggy slapped her crossed fingers in the palm of her hand and pointed to an imaginary pocket she imitated first one man then the other one made his bargain with his feet far apart the other stood with his close together finally the affair was closed she paid out an imaginary sum of money sprang into an imaginary buggy and drove away grandpa was cackling delightedly and was the baby's only spectator for the others were so used to her tricks that they scarcely paid any attention to her tilda jane and perletta sat side by side both very stiff and very proper they were fresh from their lesson with the erratic young lady who took them at all hours of the day sometimes not till late at night but they always get their instruction i notice murmured hank if she keeps them till midnight ain't perletta a peacock she thinks she's got one of her big feet in society my good girl every one ain't as frolicsome and easy-going as that yellow-haired young lady what's aunt melindy doing he burst out laughing a man with a hurdy-gurdy had come along the road and seeing this gay party on the lawn was favoring them with his whole repertoire aunt melinda inspired by the sound of the music had set her cup of tea on the grass and catching up her skirts had begun dancing up and down and across the lawn baby lola not to be outdone seized her little frilled petticoats and tripped to and fro on her tiny toes followed by her barking fox terrier merry wags poacher and handy andy while una peeked timidly from behind tilda jane's chair and emitted faint yelps of excitement there's mr hank called miss terrain's merry voice suddenly i see him spying at us from an upper window bertrand please go bring him down it's a shame for him to be alone this lovely afternoon a holiday too the young man in the white flannel suit turned round caught sight of the skulking hank deposited the cup he was holding on the table and with a dancing step that kept time to the music hurried toward his neighbor's house come on over he said after he had run nimbly upstairs and had cornered hank i can't i've on my old clothes never mind that we're not slaves to fashion you must excuse me said hank firmly bertrand took him by the arm look here old fellow he said gravely ever since we came to this house you've overwhelmed us with favors you've lent us things let your adopted sister give us drives and my sister thinks it very odd that you don't come and call go change your clothes if you don't want to come this way i will wait for you i can't go said hank but his tone was weakening i'll sit here till you're ready said bertrand coolly and drawing out a little pocket mirror he began to arrange his mustache hank grinned and fled down the staircase saying i'll be back in a minute he donned his best suit of clothes and his quarters in the barn and was speedily back again bertrand escorted him over to the lawn and miss terrain held out a friendly hand to him from behind the tea-table come here neighbor sit by me and i'll give you a cup of tea 
how's all your care asked hank politely after she had put the cup in his hand oh this family is all quite well said miss torraine with a smile you sound as merry as crickets hank went on we're all young in our ways in this house she said with a shake of her light head all but faisal she added as the elderly maid appeared in the doorway of the house some more hot water faisal then she continued look at aunt there and she nodded toward the old lady who had sunk on the grass in a state of exhaustion one would think she was twenty how is perletta getting on with her studies asked hank glancing toward the big girl who sat a little way from them still in her condition of solemn content progressively said miss torraine gaily you can't make a bird of paradise out of a state of maine barn fowl in a day but will the fowl ever make the bird of paradise he asked keenly the girl shrugged her shoulders i doubt it then is it worth while to try what else could you do you don't want to destroy the poor fowl's illusions let her learn by experience if you're contented to try to improve her plumage i am agreeable said hank it's none of my business anyway but i'm glad of the chance to thank you for the pains you're taking with tilda tilda jane is delicious said the girl in a low voice her ambitions are sensible and pathetic perletta is different i just scream over her i wouldn't have missed teaching her for a kingdom by the way she says you want a new maid as soon as you move in your house faisal has a niece in the country who wishes to come to town would you try her is she an orphan asked hank anxiously i don't know why do you ask well i don't much hanker for more orphans faisal said the young lady is your niece an orphan her pa and ma was living last week said faisal gloomily then we'll try her said hank cheerily let us know when she comes and we'll see her look at that child hank cried tilda jane suddenly as she sat with adoring eyes fixed on the beautiful lola the little one was walking in a stiff dignified manner over the lawn mr waysmith is somewhere near said miss Terrain. her remark was superfluous for everyone saw that the amusing child was mimicking the walk of their friend the merchant she had caught sight of him away down the road and in a flash her slow walk turned into a run and she scampered down the road to meet him and the dilatory muffles he is a good man said hank under his breath as his employer appeared at the gate yes replied miss terrain who had caught his remark and he is so reticent about his goodness that he is often misunderstood look at the expression of his face isn't it like bless you my children it is said hank getting up and standing a little aside as mr waysmith came up the walk a few minutes later the dilson family humans and dogs as hank said were wending their way home hank said tilda jane isn't there something in the bible about it being a pleasant thing for brethren to dwell together in unity i guess there is sissy it sounds familiar we're all happy now said the little girl contentedly and i don't believe our family boat is going to run against any more snags though maybe as perletta is settled we ought to adopt another orphan hank stopped short and planted both feet firmly on the path now look here tilda enough is as good as a feast 
i've helped comfort two orphans i've done my duty and we'll draw the line there the little girl laughed mischievously and added except orphan dogs you don't know how many mr waysmith may fetch us there ain't so much responsibility about dogs said hank with determination there is with humans they've got souls excuse me i must give dad an arm to his bower he's walking a bit shaky he's laughing at something perletta has said replied tilda jane hank i'll never stop being glad that you let me bring another orphan girl here i wouldn't undo it exactly said hank but as i said before we'll close the series with this one what with me and grandpa and perletta not to mention the dogs and other critters you have enough orphans on your hands now so long life to all of tilda jane's orphans and may perletta be the last that's for providence to say murmured the little girl i wouldn't dare take that stand end of tilda jane's orphans by marshall saunders recording by john brandon